so I um, have mentioned one book. Uh, one in particular has been really impacting, I know, for a lot of people in our community. Um, it's written by a American pastor um, <laughs> named John Mark Comer, and it is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And, and part of some of my plans over the coming weeks is to read that book so, um, after reading the Sabbath and uh, and kind of explore, as I understand it, this explores a lot of how we engage with those Sabbath rhythms in a modern world um, and, and even some of the practical things about that. I will um, make a social media post after this with a, with a list of some resources if you are really interested in, in going deeper in, in re-examining some of the ways that we um, do rest or, or sometimes it's about letting go sometimes it's about bringing in um, new patterns and, and new practices Listen to Paul's language, Ephesians 6, let's start off in 10. Finally, here's the last thing in the letter. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, kind of imagery, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. That's a whole other sermon. Um, the devil is a malicious God over all the other spiritual beings in the dark world. He's called by Paul and Jesus, the God of this world. And right here, he's called the devil. For, here's why, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now notice there is all sorts of language used by the biblical authors, uh, rulers, authorities, power, spiritual forces of evil, principalities, princes, spirits, angels, demons, and gods. The gods are powerful spiritual beings with authority over kind of nations and the demons are lower level spiritual beings who work for the gods. That's kind of theory. The biblical authors are all making the same point. There is, listen, there is one creator God, but there is a multiplicity of created gods or real spiritual beings. Think of them as lesser gods. And these gods have a measure of free will and autonomy just like human beings. But the fact is, there is an invisible world all around you that is just as real as the visible world. Now, the majority of you don't buy that. Um, there are three worldviews that I bump into all the time in the city of Portland. There are way more kind of across the globe, but three that I bump into all the time if you're taking notes. The first, next slide, um, is kind of monothe monotheism. Um, and it's the idea, you know the idea well, that there is one God, and Jesus is how you get to God. And all the other gods in the major world religions, and Islam, and Hinduism, and all that stuff, are false gods. And by that, the majority of Western Europeans mean non, kind of non-entities. I would argue that worldview is actually not the worldview of Jesus. A couple of weeks ago, Hannah um, spoke on our little message deal, and um, she talked about the Sabbath and about what it might, what could it look like for us to actually take a Sabbath rest. Um, I've been reading John Mark Comer's um, book, *The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry*. Now, um, before we went into lockdown, I kind of was like, "Oh, cool." So I, um, 
I'm gonna read some books. I've got tons of books that I've been meaning to read. So I was like, I'm gonna read some books. I'm gonna just take some downtime. I'm gonna spend loads of time just praying and spending time with Jesus. And actually over the four weeks, a lot of that hasn't happened the way that I wanted to. And I could feel like a failure about it, or I could actually just maybe do something about it. So when I say to you that I have um, read, uh, I'm reading John Mark Comer's book, what I mean is I have started John Mark Comer's book because I, it got dropped to my house on Friday. So take that with a grain of salt. I have started to read this book and I'm loving it. And there's a bit at the beginning where he says, uh, we are distracting ourselves into spiritual oblivion. And then he quotes John Ortberg in, um, as saying, for many of us, the great danger is not that we renounce our faith. It is that we become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. Um, John Mark Comer describes this as the pleasure principle. As long as we run our life on the pleasure principle, we will never mature into the man or woman that has the capacity to enjoy life as God intended it. This is also known as the flesh. We exercise our relationship with the flesh by reacting to short-term desires that please our false self, a type of misguided satisfaction that looks different for all of us. And is, the, and is displayed through different mediums. It could be, again, in the form of social media that releases dopamine. Or, others, or for others, it could be appeasing our sexual desires. For some, it could be impulsive eating or going to Kmart. <laughs> Ka pai. So, <laughs> so, it can look like uh, many different things for each and every one of us. We are all created differently. We're wired differently. But our response to our own satisfaction and to our own self-pleasure is almost identical. Jesus uses the discipline of fasting to break free from the power of the body and the power of desire. John Mark Comer says this about fasting. Fasting is starving the flesh to feed the spirit. Okay, And so however you engage in fasting, whatever your interpretation is of fasting, remember that in that moment that we are making room for the Spirit to move, for the Spirit to transform us. I just want to say thank you, Ritani. And um, yeah, and j j just to finish as we do, is, I know there's coffees and stuff, but today if you want to receive prayer, I think particularly along the area, area of just... Uh, a real hunger today coming, maybe to Tani spoken, that yeah, actually, that's me. I just want to just simply by coming maybe to the front, just offering my life, saying, today I am hungry, I'm, I'm longing, I do want to offer myself. And uh, we'd just love to pray for you, so God bless you. Thank you, Tani. Yeah, thank you. And so God has a, a huge priority on this Kaupapa of integrity about not just, I, I know it's N.T. right. he says that, who you are in private is who you really are. And John Mark Comer says that how you react is who you are. So there's this idea that actually what's going on underneath is actually the true reflection of who we are. And so the more that we tap into these inner parts of us, the integrity, uh, the, this, this is the story that actually is making us better friends, better parents, better um, employees, employers, all these types of things, and they actually enhance the manner of our life. I want to connect with you. And so when we pray, we're not just saying, oh God, far away, distant, really large being. We're saying, Papa, you're close. And, uh, you know, Father God. And also I think there's room for Mother God in there, but that's another conversation, right? I won't get too tricky. Oh, don't leave the church because of that. Well, actually, if you leave the church because of that, you're probably never part of it. That's all right. All right. All right. Hallowed be thy name. Okay. Moving on, people. <laughs>